intermediate risk prostate cancer. Again, intermediate risk is Gleason 7, PSA 10 to 20, T2B or T2C disease. Favorable intermediate risk is one intermediate risk factor. Less than 50% uh, positive biopsy cores and Gleason 3 plus 4 equals 7. Unfavorable per some state criteria is uh, greater than one intermediate risk factor, greater than or equal to 50% uh, positive biopsy cores and Gleason 4 plus 3. If it doesn't have these factors, they behave more like low risk. Uh, if they do, they are more like high risk, but not quite as bad. Favorable intermediate risk prostate cancer, life expectancy greater than or equal to 10 years, which is 77 years old in the US. Active surveillance is preferred per AUA 2017, but treatment may be offered as follows. You can do hypofractionated external beam radiation, 60 gray and 20 fractions a la chip and profit, or 70 gray and 28 fractions a la RTOG 0415. This includes the prostate and the proximal one centimeter of the seminal vesicles with the six millimeter margin, except for posteriorly five millimeters to form the PTB. Sim with uh, three fiducials, supine, vaclock, full bladder, empty rectum, IGRT with daily port films uh, for fiducials or daily cone beam CT. Note that there isn't a role for brachy boost to external beam for favorable intermediate risk. RTOG 0232 trial showed combo had higher grade two to three toxicity with no benefit. Um, Prestige Astro 2016. Alternatively, for favorable intermediate risk, SBRT 3625 centigram 5 fractions with fiducials. Uh, low dose rate brachytherapy alone, iodine 125 to 145 gray or palladium 103 to 125 gray. An important criteria here is that the gland is between 15 and 60 cc's. The patient doesn't have any bad urinary symptoms. In other words, their IPSS score is less than or equal to 15, and nothing is precluding them from getting anesthesia. Surgery is another option. This is radical prostatectomy with pelvic lymph node dissection if they don't have any surgical comorbidities and if the probability of lymph node involvement is greater than 2%. The patient has a life expectancy of less than 10 years. Radiation, either IMRT or brachy is um, possible as is observation. Um, if they are Gleason 3 plus 4, again, you can consider omitting hormone treatment. In fact, none of these patients get hormone treatment. For unfavorable intermediate risk disease, uh, the story is a little bit different. If they have a life expectancy of greater than or equal to 10 years, they can get radical prostatectomy. They can get external beam plus six months of adjuvant ADT. You can start the ADT with the radiation concurrently per Dan Spratt. Again, Lupron dose is 7.5 milligrams for one month, 22.5 milligrams for three months, 45 milligrams for the six month shot. There is a five to 10% overall survival benefit with ADT. The subset of RTOG 9406 supports the use of ADT for unfavorable intermediate risk disease, but not favorable intermediate risk. Um, alternatively, external beam radiation, 45 gray with a brachy boost and ADT. Um, note that a biochemical uh, relapse-free survival may be improved with brachy boost by 20% per ascend RT. If the patient has a life expectancy of less than 10 years, uh, you can consider radiation, either IMRT or brachy, or observation. Evidence, randomized controlled trials for hormones um, show increased biochemical progression-free survival by about 20% with three to six months of ADT. Overall survival, 10% benefit only in D'Amico and RTOG 9408, which are high-risk patients or included high-risk patients. RTOG 9601, Lancet Oncology 2005, zero to three, um, sorry, zero versus three versus six months of ADT. Three out of six helped, uh, six was better. RTOG 9408, six, four months of Casidix and Lupron increased overall survival for intermediate risk patients. Dana Farber, D'Amico 2008, increased overall survival with six months of ADT. This included both intermediate and high risk patients. U70 gray, um, overall survival at five years was 78% versus 88% intermediate risk patients. There's no need to delay neoadjuvant or to do neoadjuvant ADT uh, by two months anymore. You can just start with radiation. Moderate hypofractionation, um, basically all of these trials. Um, Morgan PRO article from 2018, cancer control is similar between hypofractionation and conventional fractionation for prostate. Hypofractionation works across all risk groups. Hypofractionated acute side effects occur earlier and slightly higher acute GI toxicity. Late effects are similar except in RTOG 0415 and the HYPRO trial, which had higher GU toxicity. Um, most hypofract trials did not treat the lymph nodes. First is PROFIT, CATNON, JCO 2017. 1,206 intermediate risk, non-inferiority trial of the following, 78 gray and 39 uh, fractions at 
2 gray a fraction versus 60 gray and 20 fractions at 3 gray a fraction. There was no ADT. Five-year biochemical progression-free survival was 85% in both arms. There's no significant difference in late grade 3 or greater GI or GU toxicity. The bottom line from profit is hypofrac, uh, 60 gray and 20 fractions at 3 gray a fraction was non-inferior to conventional dose escalated. 78 gray radiation with no increase in late toxicity. A chip Astro 2018, this is 3,216 PT1B to T3A N0 M0 patients. Low risk was 15%, intermediate risk was 73%, high risk 12%, non inferiority trial of the following 74 gray and 37 fractions at 2 gray a fraction versus 60 gray and 20 fractions at 3 gray a fraction versus 57 gray and 19 fractions at 3 gray a fraction. Five-year biochemical failure, 88% versus 90% versus 85%. 60 gray was non-inferior to 74 gray. You cannot say that 57 gray is non-inferior. The five-year GU and GI late effects as reported either by physicians or patients were unchanged. Patients uh, reported sexual functions were improved in hypofractionation. The bottom line here is hypofractionation, 60 gray and 20 fractions at 3 gray a fraction is non-inferior to non-dose escalated conventional radiation to 74 gray. Um, note that chip dose constraints are the rectum V20 less than 85, uh, rectum V30 less than 57%, rectum V50 less than 22%, uh, rectum V60 less than 0.01%, bladder V60 less than 5%, uh, bladder V40.5 less than 50%. In purple I have for chip, hypofractionated 57 gray and 19 fractions at 3 gray a fraction is not non-inferior. The next trial is RTOG 0415, Lee Bruner, JAM Oncology 2019. This is 1,092 low risk patients. It's again a non inferiority trial of 73.8 gray at 41 fractions at 1.8 gray a fraction versus 70 gray and 28 fractions at 2.5 gray per fraction. Bottom line hypofractionated 70 gray and 28 fractions is non inferior to conventional non dose escalated radiation. There's no difference in patient assessed quality of life. However, there is increased late grade 2 and uh, 3 GI toxicity with hypofractionation. SBRT, PACE B trial, TREE ESTRO 2021, brand at All Lancet Oncology. This is 874 low and intermediate risk patients, excluding unfavorable intermediate risk of 4 plus 3 equals 7. It was a non inferiority trial of 78 gray and 39 fractions or 62 gray and 20 fractions versus SBRT 36.25 gray. Two year late toxicity CTCA GU grade 2 plus 5.8% versus 12% with SBRT, and this is significant. Also, GU grade 2 plus LENAC 15.4% versus 5.9%, also significant. So acute GI or GU toxicity was not different. Bottom line, there is worse late GU toxicity with SBRT, but only in those that were treated with the LINAC. However, half in this trial had no fiducials on the LINAC. There was no difference if uh, CK was used. Um, there was no difference in late GI toxicity. Efficacy outcomes are pending. Focal dose escalation IMRT, this is the FLAME trial, Kirkmeyer, JCO 2021. 571 patients with intermediate and high risk. They either got 77 gray and 35 fractions at 2.2 gray fraction versus SIB focal boost up to 95 gray to MRI nodules as feasible with priority to OARs. Um, 95 gray was only achieved in 20%. Five year biochemical disease free survival, 85% versus 92%. Um, late uh, grade 2 GU and GI toxicity was not different. Bottom line, focal boost to the tumor on the MRI shows um, uh, improved biochemical disease pre uh, survival without worsening toxicity. There was no benefit in distant METs. Only 20% actually reached 95 gray and there was no CTV or PTV margin from the GTV nodule for the high dose SIB. Toxicity follow-up outcomes, Nguyen, zero comorbidity. There's a benefit with short-term ADT with moderate severe comorbidities. There's no benefit. Radical prostatectomy is more upfront incontinence, late GU incontinence, and erectile dysfunction. External beam has more late bloody stools, fecal incontinence, and loose stools. Low dose rate brachytherapy, more LUTs in the first year, and near equivalent erectile dysfunction. 
ADT only uh, for downsizing the prostate prior to brachy. Outcomes 75 to 90 percent biochemical progression free survival at five years, greater than 90 percent cost specific survival. ADT and unfavorable intermediate risk provides about 5 to 10 percent overall survival benefit per D'Amico.